In this video, we'll review how to graph rational functions. This will be part one in a two-part set of videos for graphing rational functions. In order to graph rational functions, we're going to look at the following ideas. What the roots or x-intercepts are, whether it's a proper or improper rational function, which will in turn help us define the end behavior, where the vertical asymptotes are, and then all this will be combined to form a sine line where we can figure out whether the function is positive or negative in each interval. We'll then use all this information to sketch the function. So let's begin. For g of x equals the quantity x plus 3 divided by the quantity x minus 1 times quantity x plus 7, let's start by figuring out whether it's a proper or improper fraction. Because up top we have an x, and on the bottom we would have what would be an x squared, this is a proper fraction. The degree of the denominator is greater than the degree of the numerator. The roots can be found by setting the numerator equal to 0, in which case x plus 3 equals 0, or x equals negative 3. x equals negative 3 is the root, which means negative 3 is 0 would be an x-intercept. To find the vertical asymptotes, we'll find where the um, bottom would be undefined, be where it's equal to 0. Therefore, x minus 1 cannot be 0, and x plus 7 cannot be 0, which means x cannot be 1, or x cannot be negative 7. Therefore, the vertical asymptotes are x equals 1, and x is negative 7. Because it's a proper rational function, we know that the end behaviors will both go towards 0. That means as x goes to negative infinity, f of x is going to 0, and as x goes to positive infinity, f of x is still going to 0. For the sine line, we're going to look at the critical points, which are found by using the roots and the vertical asymptotes. We have one root and two vertical asymptotes. The smallest of those three numbers is negative 7, so that's going to go first on the sine line. The next smallest would be negative 3, so that's next, and lastly 1. Because we have these three critical points, we're dividing it up into four intervals. Now function g of x is made of three factors, x plus 3, x minus 1, and x plus 7. I'm going to combine this information into a chart to help me figure out what the sign of each interval is. So because I have three factors, I'm going to say it's the quantity x plus 3, the quantity x minus 1, and x plus 7. x plus 3, that first factor, if we looked at that as a line, f of, let's say y equals x plus 3, it'd be a line with a positive slope. Because it has a positive slope, the left side would start low, and it will rise as you go to the right meaning it's going to begin um, with negative values towards the left in the first intervals and eventually become positive. Now, if you solve x plus 3 equals 0, you get x equals negative 3. Negative 3 is that crossover point where the y would be 0. So we're going to be looking at a line that starts negative and after x is negative 3 becomes positive. That means the first interval from negative infinity to negative 7 is going to be negative. From negative 7 to negative 3 would still be negative. But any time after negative 3, it's going to be positive. Now x minus 1, if we think of the line y equals x minus 1, that again will be a positive slope, meaning it's going to start negative, and then after 1, um, it's going to become positive. So the first interval from negative infinity to negative 7 will be negative. It'll still be negative between negative 7 and negative 3, still negative between negative 3 and 1, but after 1, it becomes positive. The line y equals x plus 7 is again a positive slope, meaning starting negative. But after where x is negative 7, it becomes positive. So only the first interval is negative, the other ones are positive. Now in that first interval, we have a negative times negative times negative. The three negatives in that first interval, when you multiply together, would be negative. So our first interval from negative infinity to negative 7 is negative. The next one has two negatives and one positive. Two negatives when you multiply is positive, so the second interval is positive. The third interval only has one negative, so the third interval is negative, and the last one only has three positives, which when you multiply together is positive. Now, it will not always go negative, positive, negative, positive. Um, so that's why we do the table to check. Now, as far as the sketch goes, I know that we had the two vertical asymptotes, and we also had the one root. So I'm going to go and sketch those in first. The x equals negative 7 would just be somewhere on the left, and the x equals 1 is on the right. Now, I also had the root which would give me the x-intercept of negative 3, 0. I also have the band behavior, which tells me that we're going to have a horizontal asymptote for the ends, where y is 0. So I have these four pieces of information, and now I'm going to go and sketch what the curves look like. In the first interval from negative infinity to negative 7, we know that from the sine line it's a negative piece. It's going to have to go towards those asymptotes, and it's negative, which means it's going to be below the x-axis and approaching both of the um, asymptotes which means it's going to curve um, 
as you move from right to left, it's going to move from the asymptote, rising, and then flattening off right below the x-axis. So it's going to look something like this. Now in the um, second interval, we know it's going to be positive. So between negative 7 and negative 3, which is the root, it's going to be positive. Now it's going to come off the asymptote and hit negative 3, which means it's going to be decreasing. So coming from the asymptote, passing through negative 3, 0, the negative, next interval would be negative, so it's going to continue and drop down towards that other asymptote. So it's going to look like that. The last interval is where it's positive. So we know it's going to be above the x-axis, but it's going to be between those two asymptotes. It's going to uh, decrease coming down from the uh, vertical asymptote and then flattening off above the um, horizontal asymptote. So the curve will look like this. Now I'm going to put up another example and I'd like for you to try it. When you're ready, resume the video. So pause it, try it, resume the video when you're ready. Here we go. I'll give you a minute to um, get ready, pause it, and again, I would really encourage you to work this out before looking at the answers. If not, go through it, check the answers, and then go back to the beginning of the video, retry the problems, and then correct your answers again. All right, hopefully you've had a chance to work this one out. Up top, we have an x times an x, which would be an x squared, and in the denominator, we have just an x. x squared over x would be an improper fraction here. Because it's x squared over x reduces to just an x, that's going to help me find the um, end behavior later on. For the roots, I have two factors up top, so I'll set both equal to 0. Solving, I'll get either x is negative 4 or x is positive 2. Because I have two real roots, I have two x-intercepts. For the vertical asymptote, we only have the one factor on the bottom, so x plus 1 cannot be 0 meaning x cannot be negative 1, or there's one vertical asymptote where x is negative 1. For the end behavior, because it's an improper fraction where the degree of the top is greater than the degree of the bottom, we know that the end behavior will go towards the infinities. Because it's a positive x when you reduce it, that means left side down, right side up, or as x goes to negative infinity, f of x goes to negative infinity, and as x goes to positive infinity, f of x goes to infinity. We have the three critical points, negative 4, 2, and negative 1 from the asymptote. So we'll go ahead and label these three critical points on the sign line. The smallest is negative 4, followed by negative 1, and finally 2. Because we have the three critical points, we're breaking this into four intervals. I have the three factors, two up top, one on the bottom, so I'll label those into my chart, and find the signs for the um, four intervals. Starting with negative infinity to negative 4, um, the line y equals x plus 4 has a positive slope, meaning starts in the negatives. After negative 4, it becomes positive, so the other intervals are positive. x minus 2 is again a positive slope, meaning it starts negative, but it doesn't become positive until after x is positive 2, meaning the first three intervals, the negative infinity to negative 4, negative 4 to negative 1, and negative 1 to 2 are all going to be negative values, where the last one's positive y equals x plus 1 would be a positive slope, so again starting negative, and it becomes positive after x is negative 1. This means the first two intervals are negative, and the next two are positive. Now multiplying out all the factors, negative times negative times negative, makes the first, um, or first interval negative. The two negatives on the next interval positive, multiply to be positive, so the next one's positive, and so on. Sketching out what we know, well, we have the one vertical asymptote, where x is negative 1. Uh, we have no horizontal asymptotes because these ones are going to approach the infinities. We do have the two roots, the x is negative 4 and x is positive 2, so we're going to have the two x-intercepts. And then we're going to go ahead and put this information together to be able to do the final sketch. And again, we're going to need to look at the signs. In the first interval from negative infinity to negative 4, we know that from the sign line, it's negative. So, and we also know that it's approaching negative infinity, as x goes to negative infinity, meaning it'll be rising um, from the bottom into that x-intercept. From the x-intercept, we can look at the next interval, and it's going to be positive, so it's going to continue up, and it's going to approach that asymptote. So it's going to look something like this. On the other side of the asymptote, we know that it's going to be negative. We can see that from the sign line. So it's going to rise from the uh, asymptote from the bottom. It's going to uh, leave the asymptote. It's going to hit that x-intercept, and then again, looking at the sign line, we see that after that um, 2 comma 0, it's going to become positive. And looking at the end behavior, we know it's going towards infinity. 
it'll look something like this. Now again, looking at what we know, it's got n behaviors where the as x goes to negative infinity, it f of x goes to negative infinity, meaning it's going to go down to the left. As x goes to positive infinity, it's going to rise towards infinity, which means the right-hand side goes up. We have a um, problem where it's an x squared over an x. Anytime the degree of the numerator is one greater than the denominator, we got that slant asymptote. And we can see that here. There would be a diagonal asymptote between those um, two curves. All right. Hopefully this helped you understand how to do the um, graphing of the rational functions. If you're still a little bit confused, there's going to be another video here shortly that you also may want to check out. Thank you for watching this video.